signs that narcissistic moms sabotage their relationships with their daughters. Mwah, my stars, thank you so much for joining me today, and I certainly hope you are treating yourself well. Welcome to the Luminous Star channel. Everyone who's visiting for the first time, if you would like to join the Star family, please click the notification bell as you do so. Everyone, please check the description box below. Check for details to today's video. And if you would, please like and or share today's video. Topics of discussion. Narcissistic mothers apply their mask like they apply their cosmetics in order to conceal signs of flaws. Next topic. Giving poor advice provides narcissistic moms a strong sense of control. Third topic, like a cult leader, narcissistic moms never make the bottom line clear to her daughter. Fourth topic, narcissistic mothers often groom their daughters to become a carbon copy of her. Last and final topics are the tools, references, and resources of which you can find in the description box below. All right, first point, keeping secrets, withholding information, conspiring to be mysterious, loyalty to her false self, smear campaigning to deceiving others are all methods to how narcissistic mothers often leave their daughters clueless about the story of who she is and who she was before she became her mother. All right, so uh, some narcissistic moms, some moms who have a cluster personality such as a borderline or histrionic or antisocial personality disorders often keep secrets. This is something that they're masters at. One of the other things that she often does is she does not share her story behind the story. Okay, she, she doesn't share with her daughter who she was before she became her mother. This is very often the case. Unfortunately, this deprives her daughter of knowing who she really is. This also deprives her daughter of knowing who she really is. Okay, so not only does the mom not share with her daughter a part of her story, right, or her history. So not only does the mother not share who she was while she was growing up, you know, some of her experiences in life, how she experienced her own family, okay? In other words, her daughter uh, does not really understand who she is because she don't really understand who her mother is, all right? So as she grows up, she's really deprived of uh, understanding uh, some of her her ways, you know, why she may do some of the things that she does. Why does she tend to perceive herself in the world and others a particular way as she's growing up? Well, her mother can help her with that because more than likely there are some similarities between her mother and herself. So daughters are deprived in certain ways and that's actually one of the worst ways to deprive a that a mother can deprive her daughter when she does not share who she was before she became her daughter. Okay, so uh, this is unfortunate, but often the case. Okay, next point. Oh, next point. <laughs> Daughters of narcissistic mothers often are clueless as to the true identity of their mothers as her mother continues by design to deprive her daughter of her story behind her story. Narcissistic mothers tend to apply their mask to perfection like they apply their cosmetics in order to hide flaws. Who can possibly know her? Okay, so the mother not only applies her mask so perfectly or nearly perfectly, right? Because she's uh, attempting to uh, hide her flaws. She's attempting to remain mysterious to her daughter. She's attempting, and all of this is for narcissistic supply, of course. But the bottom line is she applies her mask like she applies her cosmetics. And this is to hide, to conceal. Okay, so this is also another way that her daughter is being deprived. She doesn't really know who her, her mother is. Her mother is a big mystery. Sure, she knows her mother is her mother, but who is she as a woman, as an individual? This is very important because this is a part of her daughter's history that can help her know herself, all right? Not only know her mother, but know herself. This does not mean the mother and daughter are carbon copy, but the bottom line is, if a daughter knows her mother before she became her mother, this is a treasure to her, okay? This is a real treasure, because this helps her to understand and understand certain things about herself. 
But again, of course, the daughter has her own identity. However, the cherry on top is knowing her mother as not only her mother, but as a woman and an individual. Let's move forward. By providing poor advice about marriage, parenthood, sex, male and female relationships, and how to resolve conflicts, challenges, and issues deriving from such is another way that narcissistic mothers like to remain in control. Okay, so this is another way that narcissistic mothers try to uh, maintain that strong sense of control within the mother-daughter relationship. Okay, she gives her daughter poor advice. Now, some of you may be wondering, well, how is that keeping control? Well, because her daughter, as she's growing up, at some point will be curious about marriage, will be curious about sex, will be curious about parenthood. She will be curious about how to resolve conflicts, challenges, and issues deriving from such things. She will be looking to her mother for that because her mother may be married at the time as she's growing up. Obviously, her mother has had sex because she's on the planet, right? <laughs> so obviously, her mother has been pregnant. Obviously, her mother knows something about marriage if she's ever been married before. And even if she has never been married, her mother knows something, obviously, about male and female relationships because, again, she's there on the planet meaning her mother had to have been pregnant at some point. Therefore, she has had to have engaged in sex. So her mother knows something about parenthood. She may be a poor parent. She may be a poor model of a parent, but she knows a little bit of something about parenthood because she has obviously fed her daughter at some point, kept the clothes on her back, you know, provided some sort of shelter, or she's reached out uh, for public assistance, or whatever the case may be. At some point, daughters look to their mother for advice about various things in life. When her mother withholds such information or when she provides poor advice about such, she remains in control because she keeps her daughter dependent. This is how codependent behavior comes into play. Let's move forward. Her sense of control remains intact as her daughter's sense of dependence increases over time. Neural pathways to her narcissistic mother are formulated due to biology, habit, epigenetics, and possibly transgenerational or intergenerational trauma. Simply put, her daughter remains dependent or overly dependent upon her mother as her mother works to remain and control of the mother-daughter relationship. Neural pathways to her narcissistic mother is another way that not only overly dependence uh, increases, but this is another way that trauma bonding or a toxic tie to her mother is formulated and probably will remain intact for years to come. And of course, due to biology, habit, epigenetics and transgenerational or intergenerational trauma. The effects of certain life experiences, such as uh, being homeless, that is probably going to be traumatizing to the parents and grandparents. This is passed on to the offspring. This is where transgenerational and intergenerational trauma comes in. The aftermath of certain experiences that may have been traumatic to the parents and or grandparents are passed on to the offspring. Okay, this is also where epigenetics comes in. This is where the DNA reading is altered due to such things, such as trauma. I wanna invite all of my stars especially to do some research on epigenetics, transgenerational and intergenerational trauma. I also wanna invite everyone to check out videos that I've done on these various topics here. Next point. Like a cult leader, narcissistic mothers send out mixed and confusing messages of where her daughter stands with her and the rest of their family. The bottom line is never clear for the duration of their mother-daughter relationship. Okay, so like a cult leader, narcissistic mothers, they send out mixed 
and confusing messages to keep the daughter off balanced, okay, to keep the daughter guessing. This is also a form of gaslighting. So the daughter becomes very, uh, so the daughter becomes overly dependent upon her mother, even for making decisions that her mother ought to be teaching her how to do for herself. So like a cult leader, the narcissistic mother will send out confusing messages. Therefore, her daughter doesn't know where she stands with her and her daughter doesn't know where she stands with the rest of her siblings or her father, her grandparents, or maybe even the rest of her family because the daughter is the one who probably seems to be in limbo. She doesn't have a real seat at the family table, figuratively speaking, and sometimes not even literally. The bottom line is never clear, and more than likely this is for the entire duration of their mother-daughter relationship, unless or until the daughter sees this clearly and chooses to interrupt the dysfunctional behavior pattern. Let's move forward. Adult daughters of narcissistic mothers learn a lot as she continues to grow. However, she also perhaps comes to realize that her narcissistic mother has groomed her to behave either codependently or to suffer a form of neurosis. If she has become a golden child, she has more than likely been groomed to develop a cluster B personality. She might realize that as a child, her mother obtained narcissistic supply, regardless of which scenario she has identified herself experiencing while growing up. Okay, so if she is a golden child, if the daughter is a golden child, more than likely her mother has groomed her to develop a cluster B personality type that can be a borderline, that can be an antisocial, that can be a histrionic personality disorder. All right, so she might realize at some point how her mother obtained narcissistic supply over the years as she was growing up. So regardless of which scenario she has identified herself experiencing, she realizes at some point, perhaps, how her mother has obtained narcissistic supply as she was growing up. All right, so even if she's a golden child, she may realize this to a certain degree. It may be subconsciously, but the child who is the IP child or the scapegoated child is a daughter who realizes that her mother has uh, probably obtained narcissistic supply as she was growing up. Let's move forward. She might painfully notice how she was not raised. However, instead, she grew up to parent her narcissistic mother, grandmother, siblings, etc. All right, so a lot of narcissistic mothers groom their daughters to also parent her, and not only parent her, possibly her siblings. You know, especially if she's the eldest daughter. She may be parenting uh, her own father or her stepdad, her grandparents. I mean, usually, an IP child who is tagged to become a scapegoated child is one who is parenting a lot of family members within her dysfunctional family. So this is one way narcissistic mothers maintain uh, narcissistic supply and a strong sense of control while keeping her daughter, okay, overly dependent. Tool number one, take steps to discontinue to be emotionally invested in dysfunctional relationships with mothers who have proven not only to be unsafe emotionally, but to be untrustworthy. Narcissistic mothers are often emotionally unsafe to their daughters, okay? Because one thing is that she is keeping her daughter, she is grooming her daughter to become codependent. She's keeping her daughter sort of like one who is uh, under arrested development. Her daughter is not really uh, growing up to be who she is supposed to be. All right. In other words, she's not growing up to be a better version of herself. Her mother is not influencing that. Her mother, in a sense, is discouraging that. A mother is supposed to help groom her daughter to become her best as an individual, 
and also as a woman. However, narcissistic mothers often deprived her daughters of this. Okay, so take the steps to discontinue to be emotionally invested in dysfunctional relationships with narcissistic moms. Another reason being is because she is not trustworthy. She actually proves this over a period of time. The only thing an unloved daughter has to do of a narcissistic mom is to look back at her childhood and to look at how her mother behaved. All right, that's, all, that's all, pretty much all she has to do. But there's usually a lot of clues leading to this, and that is that she is untrustworthy and emotionally unsafe. Trauma bonding is another reason to discontinue to be emotionally invested. Once the toxic tie is broken or interrupted, the unloved daughter of a narcissistic mom can begin to uh, heal. She can also start thriving forward. This particular tool has actually been proven to be a game changer to a lot of adult daughters of narcissistic moms. But I want to invite you to try it for yourself if you haven't already. Next tool. Learn how to diffuse guilt that you've been influenced or groomed to feel. Biochemical addiction is the glue that keeps trauma bonding intact. Therefore, it is natural to feel some guilt, if not deep shame, as a result of engaging in a dysfunctional relationship with narcissistic mothers. I want to invite everyone to research biochemical addiction, all right, because this is often the glue that keeps trauma bonding intact or a toxic tie to a narcissistic mom intact. When a daughter of a narcissistic mom begins to feel guilt, if not deep shame, this is often part of the reason because she is trauma bonded, if not experiencing a toxic tie with her narcissistic mom. Biochemical addiction often is the glue that keeps that intact. This is also where the neural pathways to her narcissistic mother is also kept intact. Let's move forward. Practice mindfulness. It will take time and adjustment to learn how to exist as a person who no longer chooses to invest in dysfunctional relationships with narcissistic mothers. Practicing mindfulness is another game changer. This is something that I have found to be a game changer. When you're practicing mindfulness, you're also practicing personal boundaries. What else comes into play? Emotional discipline, as well as assertion and also self-preservation. So when you combine all of that, it packs quite a punch. Okay, so practicing mindfulness, I have learned for myself, is quite the game changer. Of course, it's going to take time and adjustment on your part to learn how to exist on this planet as a person who is choosing to no longer invest in dysfunctional relationships, not only with her mother, but with others who have a predatory nature. I want to go ahead and reiterate and mention one more time about how some daughters of narcissistic mothers often experience biochemical addiction to her mother. She also has a neural pathway to her mother. This keeps the trauma bonding intact. Having a relationship with a narcissist or close B personality type is often very addictive. This does not exclude the mother-daughter relationship. This is where the biochemical addiction as well as the neural pathways come in. It is very hard to break that tie. It is very challenging to interrupt the dysfunctional behavior pattern of having a dysfunctional relationship, a toxic relationship with one's own mother. Okay, it's very, because you, you have to factor in that this person who is a narcissist happens to be your mom. She has a close B personality type. All right, so this is a stronger tie for biological reasons. So when it comes to having a dysfunctional toxic relationship with one's own mother, once again, this is where the biochemical and the neural pathways come in, keeping the trauma bonding intact. And of course, this is unless or until the daughter becomes aware of what's going on and she chooses to interrupt that particular pattern or tie. 
references and resources. Please check the description box below for references and resources. I'm Luminous Star. I want to thank everyone for joining me today or tonight. And of course, wherever you may be right now, I wish you the very best. Until next time, stay tuned for more vlogs and stay tuned for more videos. A friendly reminder, every Thursday and every Sunday, there are new videos that come out. Now, every now and then I may skip one of those days, but rest assured, <laughs> there will be videos coming out weekly on a regular basis. Again, I'm Luminous Star. Thank you for joining me today or tonight. Until next time, stay tuned for more vlogs and videos.